<laughs> lots of information, and and that's why I love these guys. Um, you have, um, I mean, from this kind of presentation, you have so many insights, so many ideas that you can develop with further work, and um, it's it's an, really an honor to be here and to share this with uh, all of you. Um, we can open up the discussion now. Um, I think we can have uh, two, three questions before moving to the break. Um, we need a lot of coffee in the break, so. So, who's the first one? Please. Uh, please introduce yourself and you have, we have a mic. So one of the uh, the things that I uh, I found particularly striking was the one of the slides that during the first presentation showing that uh, technology is not very much used in the classroom. So uh, the only the question I have is what's the reason for it? Is it because our teachers are not trained for the use of technology, or is it because they believe that uh, uh, for language acquisition, for example, I'm an English teacher, I'm not a native speaker anyway, uh, probably traditional uh, uh, learning is preferable to uh, the use of multimedia in the classroom. For example, I was thinking of the fact that uh, Steve Jobs uh, used to uh, force uh, his children to read the paper books. And uh, uh, for example, uh, for the uh, memorization of information, very often uh, you know, people say that uh, uh, it helps us to, uh, to use a pen, pen and paper more than uh, uh, new technology because uh, technology uh, usually teaches us to, to be fast but when you learn you need to slow down and if you think of the for example the screens on a, on a tablet on an ipad they disappear at once and so uh, the retention of information is uh, probably facilitated by the uh, the use of uh, pen and paper traditional books so the question is what do you think is the reason why uh, technology is not very much used in the classroom today thank you just answered the, your question because your views on what learning is is the answer <laughs> and a lot of people have those views and they are correct views but what we're asking for is a repertoire it's not an either or right because learning happens in different contexts in different places in different students differently so that's all all we're trying to say we're not saying that slow learning or fast learning you need to do both <laughs> memory or not memory you need to do both but you gave the reasons why you and others like you resist something that they think is not good in my college new technology was the devil because we're an iconic university you know we're number five in the country right what we did was perfect why would we change 10 years i was there 10 years to try and get the university of illinois to become part of the modern world Right? To say, how do you prepare kids? When we open up one of those online uh, courses, all the students who are on campus flood to go on. We have to stop them, right? In the dormitories, in the classrooms. They want to learn in different ways. They want to learn fast and they want to learn slow. And language in particular, which is now, as I said, many making multimodal, needs it. So you are denying preparing the children for the future if you stick with what you are comfortable with. That's all I can say. And it's about a professional repertoire. And we've tried to give you the reasons why the new affordances allow you to do the things that you want to do uh, in uh, perhaps uh, for those kids who can't come to school, <laughs> uh, for those kids who don't want to do it that way, you know, and for those kids who want to be you know, c capable in the world that's in front of them. So I hope you, you uh, forgive me for answering that way. <laughs> uh, actually also, you know, it's been a, like, the, the whole point about being a long time coming, I mean, you know, first e-learning system, 1959, this is a long, long time, but also at certain points, things reach tipping points. I know it's a bit of a cliche. Just the fact that the smartphone is so pervasive, it's over, it happened overnight, I mean, the, first iPhone was 2004 and now they're just completely ubiquitous so they, they, you know there may be there may be a sudden change which really comes very quickly now the resistances are 
This changes teachers' professional practices profoundly. It's now a totally different job. So it's not the technologies are hard to use, they're not hard to use. It just completely changes what the job is. So the talking profession becomes the documenting profession. You know, the profession which knows things becomes the profession which facilitates other people making knowledge for themselves. It's a very big shift. So each of these four discursive shifts in the, the classroom discourse, the textbook, the, there, just, it just changes the job in a way that, it, you know, the job was invented 150 years ago. It's a strange job which was, didn't exist until 150 years ago, but now all of a sudden, I think we might find that it just changes very quickly. And I, who knows when it might be, but. <laughs> because he resisted technology. That, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, good morning. I have two practical issues. Uh, what's the highest number, or rather, uh, 